Street Fighter has been around for 35 years now and has produced tons of characters as a result. We're looking over all six mainline entries, so Street Fighters 1, 2, Alpha, 3, 4, and 5, to order the playable characters across all rosters. This is, of course, opinion, but it's informed by a few things. General fan appreciation shows how well characters resonate with audiences, and the number of playable roster appearances indicates which characters have been most profitable for developers. Icons who have built up a strong legacy through enticing gameplay, storylines, or both will also place higher here. We're excluding bonus characters in the handheld versions of Alpha, as well as the hidden playable sub-bosses Junie and Julie. Also, no violent Ken from Ultra Street Fighter 2. Even without those, we've got a lot to get through, so let's dig in. <laughs> right after you like this video and subscribe to our channel. Number 72, El Fuerte. El Fuerte is a chef who is absolutely terrible at cooking. Outside of his uninteresting and relatively pathetic lore, where he's basically the butt of the joke, El Fuerte acts and maneuvers like virtually no other Street Fighter character to date. Some would go as far as to say that he really doesn't fit into the world of Street Fighter gameplay in general, but that's just me and a bunch of other people. With moves like the Tostada Press, the Guacamole Leg Throw, and of course, the EX Quesadilla Bomb, Forte was designed to basically be a mix-up machine and was characterized by frustrating cat and mouse into guesses galore types of gameplay. All this paired with Capcom's, let's say, cavalier implementation of Mexican culture through him made for a non-charismatic, annoying to fight, and slightly offensive figure that we're really not hoping to see come back. Number 71, Sodom. Another butt of the joke character. At first appearance, Sodom looks formidable enough, but when you find out that the Mad Gear boss is a massive fan of Japanese culture to the point that he himself identifies as a native Japanese person and yet cannot speak the language, as most of all his dialogue is incorrectly and comically translated phrases between Japanese and English, he becomes pretty hard to root for. We'd say there's a reason he hasn't been on a playable roster in over 20 years. Number 70, Fong. Fong had a lot of potential upon his Street Fighter V debut, but it never really was realized. His damage over time poison gameplay mechanic is cool in theory, but it always proved to be wildly underwhelming, for obvious fear that buffing it could quickly make it too overpowered. He's never really been a strong character tier-wise, nor a very intuitive one. People didn't really seem to love playing him, and they certainly didn't love playing against him. 69. Nikali. Nikali had even more potential than Fong, with a diverse and powerful moveset paired with an interesting Aztec design. The community was excited to hear how this ancient warrior with potential ties to the origins of Satsui no Hado might influence the overarching story, but we never really got anything from that. Nikali gets his ass kicked a bunch of times in the story and then just recedes back into the shadows. Despite being an apparent poster boy for Street Fighter V, Nikali tripped at the starting line and never recover uvered. 68. Remy. A bit of a Street Fighter 3 stand-in for Guile or Nash, Remy is a kind of whiny, nihilistic character who, get this, hates people who fight, which makes him hard to identify with in a Street Fighter game. He never really stood out in terms of in-game abilities, and he obviously shops at Hot Topics, so... 68th. 67. Necro. Remember when everyone was like, hey, instead of Blanca or Dalsim, I'd really like to see what'd happen if those two had a freakish mutant baby? Well, we don't either, but apparently Capcom did because we got Necro in Street Fighter 3 Second Impact, and then never again. 66. 12. 12 is a generic sci-fi shapeshifter blob with almost no personality. Now this could become an interesting character if Capcom developed him, but they didn't. He can become some interesting objects and moves in some interesting ways, but that's about it in terms of his allure. 65. Hakan. The Turkish oil wrestler popped up in Street Fighter 4 and never really went anywhere. His visual design is kind of perplexing, and he did have a cool Evo moment when Infiltration counterpicked with him in Top 8, but otherwise he was kind of a dud. His wife, on the other hand... 64. Falk. Capcom has made so many clone body for Bison characters, and this is the most recent one, so it's already hard to get behind her. Falk is fairly bland in both the visual design and in her moveset, and failed to make much of a splash at all in Street Fighter V. 63. Ed. Hey, another Bison clone body. Ed was decently interesting before his release as he was a psychopower infused kid whose relationship with Balrog actually gave the boxer some humanizing qualities, but when he was released, Capcom threw most all that out the window and made him a ridiculously buff Shadowloo soldier with abilities that were kind of frustrating to fight against but also weren't all that good, so 
Ed might come back, but we wouldn't be too sad if he never did. 62. Sean. Yeah, some people kind of like Sean and do want to see him come back. He was a legit Shoto in Second Impact when he made his debut, but Capcom nerfed him so badly in Third Strike that he's widely remembered now as a joke character. Maybe he'll get another shot in Street Fighter 6 here some 25 years later, but honestly at this point, people would probably be more excited to see his sister Laura than him. 61. Oni. Oni is a non-canonical imagining of what would happen if Akuma achieved his goal of actually becoming a demon. He's definitely cool and has some interesting evolutions to more traditional Shoto attacks, but people seem to really be content with Akuma. Oni could come back, perhaps if the story actually went in this direction, but his first and only appearance thus far was kinda lackluster. 60. Lucia I think she was better than people gave her credit for during her Street Fighter V debut, but after being deemed too weak for the amount of work she had to put in, Lucia's fire died out fairly quickly and I don't know that she ever made enough of an impact to come back. It would be cool if she did though. 59. DiCapri Speaking of not getting much time in the spotlight, DiCapri was the final character to be revealed for Ultra Street Fighter IV and really didn't live up to the hype that preceded her unveiling. She has an interesting kit that does a decent job at separating her from Kami, of whom she's a bit of a clone, but DiCapri had kind of a meh first go around. I'd say we may see her back someday, and again, that would be fine. 58. Luke. Street Fighter V's final character and Street Fighter VI's protagonist, Luke, has a lot to prove. His ridiculously overpowered abilities have tragically thrown a bit of a wet blanket on Street Fighter V's final days, and the community is waiting to be impressed by him in Street Fighter VI. 57. Adon. Adon is... okay. I don't feel like there are a ton of Adon fans. He's had a few moments in the competitive spotlight because of Gamer B, but as a character, he's never really been that appealing. He's kind of an inept antagonist jobber whose high-pitched voice can come across as a little bit annoying, and Capcom should probably bring him out every third game or so at most. 56. Abel. Street Fighter IV's protagonist. His Ultra 1 was soulless, his Ultra 2 was brainless, and his personality was non-existent. Abel's footsie and grappling playstyle could be somewhat frustrating as he forced a lot of hard read situations, but the character had some undeniably hype moments in competitive play and could be a ton of fun to watch. 55. Rufus. The first officially fat Street Fighter character, Rufus was widely designed around off-putting American stereotypes and thus became one of the more hated Street Fighter characters in general. Pros like Justin Wong and Ricky Ortiz showed off very versatile tournament gameplay that was definitely fun to watch, and as many of us say that we hate Rufus, there's an odd Street Fighter charm about him that makes us interested in what a second appearance might look like. 54. Birdie. A Street Fighter 1 character who used to be white, Birdie has been playable on two rosters including Alpha and Street Fighter 5. He's kind of a big bully when it comes to playing, having deceptively good footsies for a bigger body and trap moves with skewed senses of risk and reward balance. We've seen a decent amount of player interest in and expression through Birdie, but he's not a ton of people's favorite. 53. Abigail. Physically the largest Street Fighter character, Abigail is a somewhat unique experience as he takes brawling and tank-like play to a whole new level. Capcom ran into some balance issues as he wreaked havoc online and on tournaments in Season 3 of Street Fighter V, but has since toned him down. I'd like to see Capcom continue to refine Abigail over time, but he definitely doesn't need to be in every single game. 52. Elena. One of the Street Fighter III inductees, Elena didn't seem to make too much of a splash during her initial run. When she was brought back for Ultra Street Fighter 4, however, she rocketed to the top of many players' most hated lists for having wonky hurtboxes, ridiculous hitboxes, and the incredible ability to heal herself. People remember the character for the hate, but we all seem to have mischievous smiles on our faces when we do so, because watching her heal over and over during EVO Top 8 was kind of hilarious. She's still out of the top 50, though. 51. Akira. This rival school's guest was a refreshing addition to late game Street Fighter V. She brought with her a few mechanics widely unfamiliar to Street Fighter and was fun for the community to explore. I don't know if Capcom wants to make this kind of character a regular thing or not, but Akira scores relatively high because she served her purpose very well in her one guest appearance. 50. Q. Q was mysterious and kinda haunting with his masked face, overcoat, and Vader-esque breathing, but the mystery hasn't really been delivered on as he has no personality, nor a story, nor was he amazingly strong in Third Strike, so he kind of fizzled. 
Capcom seems to be hinting at him being related to Street Fighter V's G and maybe Street Fighter VI's JP by extension, but until we get more answers, he really only gets mysterious points. 49. Nash Initially a cool evolution of Guile in the Alpha series, Charlie Nash is kind of like the Bret Hart of Street Fighter. Like, he's a good guy, you're definitely rooting for him, and he can really give it to the bad guys, but also he kinda loses a lot and gets remembered primarily for the times he was screwed over. I just wish Nash was more of a badass than his somewhat sideline roles have made him into. 48. Rashid the protagonist of Street Fighter V, Rashid has been an absolute nuisance in the competitive community, but he does tend to be a ton of fun to play and to watch when he's not in every single round of a top 8. He doesn't stand out really in any given category, but he does get like straight B's across the board, and people tend to like him just fine. 47. Zeku. The master of Guy, Zeku is basically two characters in one. His initial reveal seemed to garner some interest, but he is a little intimidating to take on and play since you basically have to learn two characters as well as the balance of switching between them mid-match. He proved to be a cool idea, but not as cool as Guy, whom he's clearly modeled after. 46. Goken. The master of Ryu and Ken, brother of Akuma, and the buffest old man to come out of a multi-year coma you've ever seen, Goken is an important figure in franchise lore and a great wise old master type character. He had a cool spin on the traditional Shoto moveset and was fun to watch, but just didn't see a ton of usage in his Street Fighter 4 appearance. I think Capcom should give him another chance, but they might not see it as worthwhile if they don't think he'll turn enough heads. 45. Laura Introduced in Street Fighter V as the sister of Sean, Laura is a Brazilian jiu-jitsu grappler with decent appeal but a tumultuous competitive history. Balancing her has proven fairly difficult as her V-trigger based play has always been a little top heavy, but we'd expect to see her come back with a bit of reworking as she was decently well received. 44. Gil Originally the boss of Street Fighter III, the messianic Gil was the first major replacement for M. Bison. Visually stunning and with a memorable moveset, Gil's official playable appearance in Street Fighter V certainly didn't do his godlike design justice, but he's always been an interesting character. 43. Gen Another Street Fighter 1 opponent first playable in Street Fighter Alpha, Gen has a great story as an old martial arts assassin struggling with leukemia. He's a badass who has gone toe to toe with Akuma's raging demon and actually blocked it, and appeals to more technical players as he tends to be a stance change character. 42. Oro. Arguably the strongest character in canon, Oro is the Yoda of Street Fighter, hiding his strength behind a kooky initial facade. He fights one handed to keep things more interesting, which is wicked cool. 41. Hugo. Previously the biggest body in Street Fighter, Hugo Andor is an Andre the Giant inspired character from Street Fighter 3. He's traditionally struggled on tier lists and definitely is not for everyone, but has a particular charm and really can make for some awesome moments every once in a while when the reads all go in his favor. 40. Rolento Another final fight guest from the Alpha days, Rolento is a war veteran whose arsenal of attacks is a Swiss army knife of military weapons. His guerrilla warfare fighting style is unique and could likely be implemented into most Street Fighter games regardless of their flow and pace. 39. Yang one of the two twins from Street Fighter 3, Yang has a stylish repertoire of moves with his rekkas, rolling kick uppercuts, and flashy super attacks. He tends to live in the shadow of his annoyingly powerful brother Yun, making him a little less popular than he might be otherwise. 38. DJ One of the new challengers of Street Fighter 2, DJ is a Jamaican musical artist who deserves more fleshing out than Capcom has given him up until this point. We're hopeful his surface level charisma will run deeper in his upcoming Street Fighter 6 appearance. 37. Minot. The young fortune telling apprentice of Rose, Minot first popped up in Street Fighter 5 to widely positive reactions. Her sexy design made her an instant waifu, but her difficult and technical style has made her a little hard to love for some. 36. Blanca. Blanca is probably the most unique original world warrior, and holds a certain status simply for being part of the OG Street Fighter crew. That said, he's long been seen as a troll character who isn't particularly strong but is almost always annoying to fight against, and we'd like to see him taken a little more seriously at some point. 35. Armika a bubbly wrestler whose strongest fighting asset very well may be her butt, Mika is always lovable outside of the ring. Inside, she's proven somewhat problematic as a character who has been hard to balance correctly, but we have faith that Capcom will bring her back and do a better job in the future. 34. Colleen 
secretary for Gil up until her playable debut in Street Fighter V, Colleen took a little while for fans to warm to. She hit a stride, however, and has proven fun to play, interesting to watch, plays an important role in the overarching story, and threatens to be a potential roster regular moving forward. 33. G. G popped up in Season 3 of Street Fighter V as an undeniably interesting addition to the game's story. He's a mysterious good guy who all but certain looks to be hiding bad guy intentions. His level up gameplay, though at first ridiculously balanced thanks to V-Trigger, surely has room to be refined and we'd hope to see what developers come up with for him in later titles. Number 32. T-Hawk. Another one of Street Fighter II's new challengers, T-Hawk comes across as a naturally charismatic Native American warrior. Now, despite how much people want to like this character, his inability to get very high up on tier charts holds him back from creeping up higher on this list. 31. Dan. Street Fighter's official joke character, Dan has fit into his role fairly perfectly over the handful of roster appearances he's made. The perfect blend of prideful, bad, ignorant, and somehow still lovable, Dan may be the best joke character in all of fighting games. 30. Sea Viper. Viper will probably continue to climb this kind of list once she comes back for a second playable appearance, but the sexy secret spy mom did really well in her first go around in Street Fighter 4. Her playstyle was crazy hype, if a little more technical and Marvel vs. Capcom-y than it should have been, but we look forward to seeing her further fleshed out, and hopefully soon. 29. Seth Street Fighter IV's Big Baddie is widely an amalgamation of many other Street Fighter characters, and while he was kind of so-so in Street Fighter IV, his massive evolution into Street Fighter V has made him impossible to ignore. 28. Karen Despite being a ridiculously rich schoolgirl, Karen doesn't fall into the overly dumb and entitled stereotype that you might expect. She pairs her endless cash flow with formidable fighting skills, a strong intellect, and leadership qualities that make her very easy to root for. 27. Makoto A young karate fighter first playable in Street Fighter 3, Makoto doesn't tend to woo with elaborate visuals, but instead impresses fans with intense fighting abilities that you just can't help but physically react to. 26. Yun Yang's twin from Street Fighter 3, Yun has been a top tier nightmare for many competitive players in both Street Fighter 3 and Street Fighter 4. That said, his prominence is undeniable and has earned him a lot of momentum, be it for better or worse, over his two playable appearances. 25. Yurian Gil's power-hungry brother was a unique addition to Third Strike in an extremely strong top tier in Street Fighter V. His Aegis Reflector is unlike most any other attack in the franchise, and his powerful personality is naturally attractive to many. 24. Dudley This classy British boxer just oozes charisma. A Street Fighter 3 alternative to the exceptionally unclassy boxer Balrog, Dudley is known for being incredibly hyped to watch and satisfying to land hits with. As such, we're all but expecting him to return to the playable realm soon. 23. Guy He's a badass ninja who wears Nikes and fights with quick strikes and sky-high suplexes. If Capcom used him more, he'd probably grow into an even greater character, but alas, he's been having to take back seats to the likes of Zeku in SF5, and now seemingly Kimberly in SF6. 22. Evil Ryu First playable back in Alpha 2, Evil Ryu was a non-canonical character until his official story debut as Kage in Street Fighter V. He had some absolutely stellar competitive showings in Street Fighter 4, giving him a few more points than he otherwise would have had. 21. Rose The psychic fortune teller has made three playable appearances including in Alpha, Street Fighter 4, and Street Fighter 5. She's definitely had annoyingly strong abilities over the years, but her power, personality, and unconventional fighting style have more than made up for those. 20. Alex the Hulk Hogan-inspired protagonist of Street Fighter 3 has never been that good of a character tier-wise, but Alex maintains an incredibly strong and somewhat mysterious appreciation from fans. From being painfully underpowered to having backwards legs, it seems no matter what Capcom throws at Alex, the people will still love him. 19. Poison it took her forever to get her first playable appearance in Ultra Street Fighter 4, but Poison has been a fan favorite for quite some time. She's sexy, controversial, and has an interesting fighting style, which all adds up to a character we think we'll be seeing more often than not moving forward. 18. Cody The final fight co-protagonist has seen plenty of love since his crossover debut in Street Fighter Alpha, and has made two return appearances since. His fun brawling style and well-defined personality make him a magnet for fans. 17. 
Ibuki. She popped up in Street Fighter 3 and hasn't missed a game since. This lady ninja is both a waifu and an often deadly character in the right hands. Her explosive and mix-up heavy play is also a ton of fun to watch in competitive games. 16. Fei Long Every fighting game franchise seems to have a Bruce Lee, and this one is particularly badass. Fei Long first appeared in later Street Fighter 2 and introduced the franchise to the now commonplace rekka based fighting style. He's not quite as prominent as some of the other high-ranking characters here, but that might just be a mistake on the part of Capcom. 15. Sakura There's a lot of community love for Sakura. She found that perfect blend of innocent schoolgirl and able fighter, and thus gets a ton of in-game attention and even more as the subject of cosplays and fan art. 14. E Honda We're getting into the bulk of the world warriors here, as E Honda has been around since the earliest days of Street Fighter 2 and made tons of appearances since. The 100 hand hitting sumo isn't always very strong, but he's all but a Street Fighter staple at this point. 13. Dalsim Perhaps the most unique of the original Street Fighter crew, Dalsim can be polarizing as he changes the pace of the fight whether you're playing as or against him. Like Honda, he's an OG world warrior who's been on more rosters than he's missed, and has a strong sense of seniority among the cast. 12. Balrog The first of the Shadaloo bosses to pop up here, Balrog is a longtime fan favorite. He's been a prominent roster member, and the Mike Tyson-related controversy surrounding his name is still an interesting topic of conversation to this day. He's not everyone's favorite, but he's definitely an undeniable part of Street Fighter. 11. Vega Beat Balrog in Street Fighter 2 and then you'll run into Vega, the mask and claw-wearing Shadaloo boss with tons of personality. Vega has turned heads with his unique and sometimes overpowered abilities, his contributions to the story, and his formidability as a creepy and deadly antagonist. 10. Jury It took a lot for a relatively newer character to place this high, but Jury is the most successful newcomer introduced in over 10 years. She's a beautiful blend of sexy and sinister, and checks just about every box for fans, perhaps save for being high enough on tier lists. She's been a part of every roster since her introduction in Street Fighter 4, and we suspect that trend will continue for the foreseeable future. 9. Guile The sonic-booming, flash-kicking American hero represents good old-fashioned Street Fighter at its best. He's one of the lead good guys, pioneered the zoning style of play, and is almost always a lock for any given Street Fighter title. 8. Zangief as scary and stressful as it can be to be walked down by the original grappler, Zangief somehow always retains a sense of charm. The Red Cyclone has only missed Street Fighter 3's roster, and one could argue at this point that a Street Fighter game without him is, well, incomplete. Also, he learned how to do spinning pile drivers by wrestling a bear during a tornado. 7. Kami. She's hot and she's usually really strong. 6. Sagat the original fighting game boss and one of the deepest characters when it comes to personality and story, Sagat has an awesome visual design, a brutal fighting style, and is often one of the strongest picks in the many games he's been a part of. 5. M. Bison He's been killed, he's been replaced, he's been killed again, and yet M. Bison retains his status as the most important and main antagonist of the Street Fighter series. Bison is a massive part of the engine that drives the majority of story threads forward, and has proven one of the most important and beloved characters in the entire franchise. 4. Ken The yin to Ryu's yang, Ken is just one of two characters that have appeared as playable in every single mainline Street Fighter game. Not only is he a go-to for guest appearances in other titles, but he's so popular that he was welcomed onto the starting roster of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. He got a little shafted in Street Fighter V with a lame story and distractingly bad visual design, but Capcom knows how crucial Ken is to fans and is clearly looking to rectify all of that heavily in Street Fighter VI. 3. Akuma There's nothing quite like the feeling of power and satisfaction that come with playing Akuma. Almost always overtuned, Akuma drips charisma with badass attacks like his raging demon, is integrated deeply into the Street Fighter lore, and often gets the extra allure of being a mysterious, unlockable roster addition that you have to earn in some way. He's appeared in crossovers that even Ryu has not, and has been in every Street Fighter game except for Street Fighter 1. 2. Chun-Li the strongest woman in the world is one of the most recognizable faces in gaming, and is one of two characters Capcom has stated will be in every Street Fighter game. 
Chun might be the most cosplayed and drawn character in the franchise and is arguably a defining part of what makes Street Fighter Street Fighter. <laughs> 1. Ryu Surprise! It's just objectively not Street Fighter without Ryu. This is the franchise poster boy, and he's clearly had more time invested into him by developers than anyone else. He's not the flashiest, but he's routinely the most commonly used character. The story is fixed around him, he's been in literally every Street Fighter game, and when the mere image of just your face can be used to represent the entirety of the fighting game genre, well, it's hard to argue you're not number one. Well, we made it. 72 playable characters all ranked in perfect order. So what'd you think? Let us know who you'd move around to wear in the comments, and please give us a like and a subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in the next one.